So welcome again my friends, now we want to set up a global store so we can store some of our data, some of our informations and probably you're familiar you're with React Redux store. Now we're going to work with that but we're going to use Redux GS Toolkit to do that and set up all the different things and also make sure to use Persist which is called React Persist to save the data while refreshing. So when we refresh we want the data to still be there and still save there. So it's going to be a very very entertaining tutorial on how to do that and manage everything together. And if you don't know what we need the store for so simply we're going to store some data there some informations that can be accessed anywhere so it can be in any page any component i need that piece of information i can go to that store and get it for me also i can update it you know and change it and delete it all the other stuff we're gonna say later but for now we're gonna work on the setup part so first thing is we want to install a few things so let me just go right here i'm just gonna go yarn add and i'm gonna start listing things so it's gonna be redux react redux is also gonna be redux gs toolkit and then also we're gonna need this is not in order i'm just like trying to remember the names next redux wrapper and then i'm gonna go through everyone when we work on them okay we're also gonna need redux thunk okay, let me just fix a typo redux thunk okay and also redux persist let me just see also we're gonna need redux div tools extension okay let me just yarn add react redux react redux to connect between you know our application and redux we need the redux uh, redux gs toolkit so i want to use the new way on the modern way of the win redux also when i need the next redux wrapper so we can wrap all of our application with the store also we're gonna need redux itself redux tank we, we added the Redux before, so we need Redux tank so we can, you know, not allow asynchronous functions uh, there. Also, we're going to need Redux persist, persist, where we're going to store our information, even though when we refresh the page, we can access our store and still see our informations. And also, we're going to need Redux div tools extensions. So in the development mode, we can actually, let me just try and install it first. So when we, you know, uh, install everything and add the Redux div tool extensions. I can access it in the div tools and see the Redux store, like what's happening there, what changes happen, and everything. So it's very, very important in the development mode, so you can actually see what's going on and what's changing with your application. So let me wait a little bit and then go back to you after. Okay, so it's done. So let's set up the store. I'm going back to my files. I'm creating a new file. Let's call it store, and then I'm going to create another file. Let's call it index.js. And then right here we're gonna start doing a few things. So first of all, I'm gonna need the configure store, okay, which is gonna be from Redux JS toolkit. Also, I'm gonna need to import the combined reducers from Redux, not Redux JS toolkit. And I'm gonna see how everything works, okay. And then also we're gonna need thank. We just wanna set up, even if you don't use it, just set up it also thank. Okay, and it's gonna be from, and let me go to Redux Tank. Where is it? Right here. Also, we need some of the, you know, tools that we needed to actually store the data even where fresh it stays there. So we're gonna need storage. So storage is gonna be from Redux Persist Lib Storage. Okay, also we need Persist Reducer. So import, okay, Persist Reducer, which is gonna be from Redux Persist. And then it's going to be like, let me just see. Okay, so we got the stuff that we need to start with. So let's define our reducers first. Reducers. And simply, if you don't know what reducers, simply like, for example, we want to store data in this store. So for example, I want to store the user data. Okay, so we're going to have a user reducer. I want to store the cart data. It's going to be a cart reducer. This is simply what a reducer there. So simply for a reducer, we can use the combined reducers. So we can have a lot of reducers at the same time. And right here, I can have any reducer I have. We didn't create it any, but when we create any time, anything, we're going to add this right here inside the reducer, like the cart, the user, etc. It's actually pretty simple. Also, we need the config for the reducers. So I can go and go cons config. And just simply for the config, the key is going to be root. So it's going to be stored in the root. And then we're going to add storage. So it's going to be stored there. Okay, this is very important. So we can store it right here. So in this in this uh, tool right here to store it. So even we're fresh, we still can have it. Then let's go and create our reducer. 
let me just the names okay so reducer and then it's gonna be i want to make sure there is no conflict with names okay so it's fine then we're gonna go with the persist reducer and then when you need the persist reducer that saves the data you need to pass the config and also so the config is going to be the first parameter and the second parameter is going to be the reducers that we have right here okay like that so this is like how you start doing things. it's pretty simple and then we can actually create the store itself so const store and then simply when i configure the store now and then we're going to pass the information so for the reducer it's going to be the reducer okay which is what we created right here and then also we need to enable the div tools so i can go div tools and simply they're only going to be available in the not in the production mode only in the development mode so we've done this before so we go to the process env don't not env like that and if it's different than the production that means we're in development so it's going to be true that means this is going to be true and it's going to be available and if it's not it's not gonna be there in the production mode also we're gonna add the middleware which is gonna be for thunk like that and simply after all of this we can just go export and then default store so and now we did set up the store so let's close this right here and then go back to pages and then underscore up to js so this is the starting point of our application and everything we do is going to be inside this component so the whole idea is to put this inside some sort of a provider and that provider is going to provide us all the information from the store and also we're going to make sure that the persist works so we can still save the information okay so this is all from the documentation just follow me so import and then the first thing is going to be the provider and it's going to be from react redux and then also we need to import the store store is going to be from and then we're going to go up from the pages and then we're going to go to the file or the folder that's called store and then also we need to import persist gate okay import persist gate from okay i i just want to make sure that the name is right so we're going to go to redux persist okay this is going to be very long and then this is going to be forward slash integration okay in t i don't know why i don't get it so then forward slash react so import persist gates okay also we need to import persist store i hate when they don't give you the import so we're gonna be persist store and it's gonna be from react redux persist like that okay and then let me just see what we're gonna do so i want to have the persister so we're gonna have it right here persister and it's gonna equal so i'm gonna use the persist store so we can persist the store that we have so the, the, the information is gonna be stored so and we're just gonna up pass our store like that so this is all we can now actually let me go down a bit so right here before that let me cut this when i have the provider like that so, and then we're gonna have the component right there so this is gonna be provider and in the, the provider we pass the store okay and the store is gonna be the store itself and also we need to pass the persist gate so persist gate okay so this is something was wrong okay i knew it so this is should be this is the wrong import. that's why we didn't get it so thank god we fixed that so now we have it so i'm gonna also put this right here and in the information or the data so let me just see what we have so the loading is gonna be null okay and then also we need to pass the persistor which is gonna be this one that we added right here with the information of the store stored okay i hope this is all what we need so this is all i think now we actually let me just create like a, a reducer or what they call a slice i don't know what they call it a slice but it's just weird so this is for example like a like for the what you call it the cards we're not going to add any action anything which is going to do, do the most basic one so we can actually just see it in the browser and see if everything is all right then we can actually continue and when we work on it exactly we want to do it in a very advanced way so simply to create a slice you can go back to the store folder create a new file let's call it cut slice we're going to keep the name convention.js okay for another mistake so cut slice i always do typos just get used to it so i'm going to go import and then create slice okay from redux toolkit 
and then I'm just gonna go right here and just start doing everything I need. So I'm just gonna go export, then cost, and then I'm gonna call this cut slice. And then this is, nah, this is cut slice, and this is gonna be equal create slice. And then create slice when I pass the information. So the name of it is gonna be cut. You can name it whatever. Also for the initial state, you can have it there. There's gonna be an empty array that's gonna have the object, uh, the product, sorry. Which is object so also we need the reducers right here we can have the actions so any you know slice or reducer whatever it's going to have some actions and the action is simply like an action to add a product that's going to be an action to update a product it's going to be an action to remove like everything from the cards that's another action so this is few actions that you can add right here and when you add this you can simply like add it to the slice by going to adding them like that so let me just first of all so const and then I'm going to get all the name of them. So for example, if I have something add to cut right here, I'm going to add the name of it right here. And then this is going to be cut slice dot action. So I want to add to the cut slice, add the actions to it, which is going to be the reducers. But we don't now. So I'm just going to, you know, uh, comment it because it's going to create an error if you don't. Then I'm just going to equal uh, export by default. So I'm just going to go to the cut slice and then like that. So when I export the reducer and I can go back to this store and import it. So if I go back right here, so import it as cut from from cut slice, and then simply add it in the reducers. And if you create another reducer, like for the user, you can add it right here. This simple. And then let me just see if everything is alright. Okay. So now if you go back to the browser, you need first of all to install this tool, which is called the Redux Div Tools. Let me just zoom in a bit. It's called Redux Div Tool. You install it so you can see it. Right here. So let me just open F12. Okay, and then I don't know if this is zoomed in. Let me zoom in a bit. So if you go back right here to this list right here in the menu, you're gonna have something new that is called Redux. And in Redux, you're gonna see everything. So as you see right here, we just added the cart right here, which is as an initial state, it's gonna be an empty array. So we have it right here. If I wanted like to change that to something, so the initial state is gonna be like hello, for example. And then go back right here and refresh this you see that the initial okay so this is showing because this is like my old you know project so it's going to be right here so let me just receive that and you see that the cat right here says hello okay so this is actually very very cool so we can follow and see every change that we do right here and the reason we use the persist because when you add like for informations i change the information right here and then i refresh it goes back to hello even though i change it for example like to goodbye that's why we use the persist because if i change it to goodbye i want it when i refresh the page it stays goodbye that's the whole idea of persisting so we can you know keep our information there and some people store it in the cookies and all but i prefer this way because i got some problems with it with nextjs but i managed to do it with persist and it's worked and it's not bad so everything is configured now if there is any problem or something you don't understand you can tell me so we can fix that and if i had some you know something wrong we're gonna see later when we actually work on them so see you next